Hey everybody, welcome to Losing Your Mind with Chris Cosentino. I'm your host, Chris Cosentino. We are here to talk about people that inspire and all my guests are inspiring in so many different ways. And I'm really looking forward to digging deep into how they got to where they are, to the top of their game, how hard they've worked, how much they've given up and how they're giving back. So without further ado, here's our next guest. Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of Losing Your Mind with Chris Cosentino. I am having a conversation today with Christian Petroni, AKA Gabagool. We'll get into Gabagool later. Don't do that, That's that's that could be. Oh, what you like. <laughs> so first off, Christian, thanks for taking time. You're on the East Coast, it's a bit later over there. Um, granted, it's beautiful and sunny outside, looks like behind you. So let's, Let's start this off. You you have, well, for starters, you're an Italian immigrant, correct? Well, actually, my, my mother and father were born on a little island off the coast of Naples called Ponza. And Ponza is like three and a half miles long and, you know, something like that. No, but don't quote me on these numbers, guys. Okay. But it's, it's small. Right. We'll small just stick with island. small. We'll stick with small island. You, walk. you walk from one side to the other. I think it takes a couple hours. Okay. So like it's small. Um, like like if there's five thousand people that live there during the winter that are surviving off the fishing industry. Years ago it was a mining industry. Before that it was Mussolini. Before that it was Punch's Pilot. Before that it was the Odyssey. You can look that up. That's the history of that island, right? And um my mother and father grew up there. You know, the summer rolls along. It goes from like 5,000 people to like 50,000 people on the island. It's just, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful, right? Kind of how, how New Yorkers go to the Hamptons, you know, just a little more Euro, you know? It basically, but what you're saying is, is people weren't wearing bathing suits on the beach and they were eating. I bathing. grew up seeing everything, man. We saw it all. We saw it all. <laughs> we saw it all from Leonardo DiCaprio walking the quartieres where we would live in a speedo unfortunately not we would always keep our fingers crossed but <laughs> like from that to like the home depot yacht pulling into the thing tom hanks saved someone from drowning denzel washington eats at the the michelin star restaurant there on this tiny little island right and my mother and father were born there but they didn't manage to meet each other until they were at my uncle Mike, God rest his soul's barbershop in the Bronx, New York, which is pretty wild when you think about how small the island is. Wow. And, uh, you know, so, so um, I'm first generation. My father came here when he was 17 or 18. Love was like, wow, like, oh my God. You know what I mean? Like, what is this? And like, I, you cannot, no way I'm going back. And signed up for nam on the spot and left and then came back proper um so that's my dad yeah and then my mom like came here she was a young girl she was 13 I think, 13, 14 years old bro can you imagine like like being oh i guess they didn't meet because they were both kind of young and like yeah but like you imagine like like she left her father and her brother and her mom behind to come here and be with Uncle Mike. Which, right. which thinking about yeah. that, let's put that into perspective. It wasn't like it was an airplane. It was a boat ride. She took a boat. Crazy, yeah. right? That's a long, that's a, that's a big thing to undertake as a kid, right? As a 13-year-old kid. You're thir a 13-year-old kid right now, you wouldn't say, hey, get on a ship and go across the ocean. No. But back then, it was a little bit, you know, I don't want to... I tossed my cookies on the Staten Island Ferry, bro. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? That's it's, a, it's a long ride. No, it's 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 wild. So yeah, like much, much respect to them. They really love it here, um, and I'm, I'm, which is great, you know. And they're still together, running around, um, making me nuts in the best way, you know. That's um, what you should do. But yeah, dude. So like. The upbringing was wild because we grew up here. Um, 
here being the Bronx, right? The Bronx, New York. And um, for most of the year, my mother was cooking dinner every day at five o'clock. You know, we were there, we had dinner. Um, really key thing there. Dinner was a family thing. Everybody sat at the table. Certain okay. time, right? And Talked about school. Yeah, we Everybody caught had up. Very we important. had the family time. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes we'd throw the news on in the background and we would literally like have that going and comment on stuff and, you know, my, 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 my mother and father, the, the best, right? And, but five o'clock was dinner and, you know, we were eating the things like pasta shuta, you know, which was just like, you know, dr you know, dry spaghetti, tomato sauce, cheese, you know, a little bit of chili, um, that staple item. My father, I think probably eats that to this day, like way. So you, dude, it's like, how do you eat pasta every day? It's like, how? It's kind of hard not to. I mean, it's funny. I think about it and it's like growing up, that is a normal staple. Growing up an Italian American, that is part of life, right? Sunday gravy day, you got, you know, if, if fish day. I mean, everything was like very regimented, of course, based off religion, right? Yes, yes. No, no meat on Friday. We did that, right? You know? Um, I don't think I could do that now, but <laughs> no, I remember having like prosciutto by accident when I was working at a catering hall on a Friday, and I was like, "Oh, no, what I do? What I do? <laughs> do I need to go to church? Like, I hate meat." But like that, what, what was cool about my mom and dad was that like they were all obviously off the boat, right? But they. You know, once a week, we'd have Chinese food. Bronx, New York City, sesame chicken, egg rolls. You get free sodas depending on how much you spend in the tiers, you know, system. Yeah. It's very Bronx. Um, the place was called uh, um, was called Red Dragon. I can, I, I hear the young lady's voice to this day. I, you know, we, we would get that once a week. And then, you know, maybe once a month, my father had this place in Yonkers, New York called Los Tacos Poblana, which is like its little green shack. And we were getting like real Mexican, Mexican, Mexican food. You know, I have, I have a sister who's half Mexican um, out in Colorado. And so he must have found this spot. And so like, it wasn't just the Italian mom staples, right? My, 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 regular life was mom, Italian mom, cucina povera, you know, pasta and patate, uh, frittatas for dinner, uh, frizzelle with escarole and beans, um, uh, spezzadini di padana, which I don't even think is a dish. My, it might not, like, what's a spezzadina? I, I, you know, little pieces, like especially like little, and there was like shredded chicken and potatoes and onions that my mother would just like fry up. Oh my God, right? So like that was, regular dinner, auntie pasta, mozzarella, blah, 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 right? Now, my mother and father, my, my mother, her parents were still alive when we were kids, you know? And they still lived in the old country on the island of Ponza. Um, so you got to go back, right? Which- oh, Every summer, every summer. That's, that is a real, I mean, you have a complete juxtaposed to what I grew up with, right? My great grandparents moved, uh, the Cosentinos, my grand, my great grandfather, Grandpa Duke, was a barber, and my grandmother, great grandmother Rosalie, you know, had a little basement kitchen. She jarred tomatoes. She grew basil. Grandpa and Duke cans. was a real man, dude. Grandpa Duke was a real man. He was oh, like yeah. the total old school barber, right? Yeah. But I did not have that luxury of the language. I was told I had to learn to speak American, right? Yeah. And then there was no option to go back because they came here and they still wouldn't really talk to me about where we were from and the history of that. You know, a lot of those, those old world secret secrets. Well, dude, listen, and not to go down that rabbit hole, but there's a reason why everybody came here. <laughs> there's a reason why everybody came here. And then there's also a reason why people may be scared of this place. Not a lot of, of our early ancestors they, they, they weren't they weren't welcomed with open arms nope. by by the um you know who was here before us you know you know the Irish and the okay. German right it wasn't like you know everyone learned to get along and and that evolved but like there's there's like my 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 uncle Louis 
who lived in Ponza, who came here for a little bit. Uh, my mom's brother came here for a little bit, went to Canada for a little bit and was like, went back to the island, never left again. He was a fisherman, never left again, right? And he had a weird kind of view of what was, you know, of us. And like, it's not for everybody, right? Yep. Like, I think that if you're looking for the American dream, you're looking for that better life to come to America, you got cojones and that's great. Yeah. This is the place to do it. I this mean, you think about it. I mean, you know, Dago, WAP, right? Those terms without papers, WAP, right? Like those terms and the last names were changed going through Ellis Island, you know, I, just because they couldn't say them properly. It was just so, so much of a culture shock when, when the Italians were coming to the U.S. And, you know, we have so much food, like the Italian American cuisine that is known as today is basically an amalgamation of what was available in this country compared to what they had at home, right? Let's, I mean, let's be honest. Nobody yeah. had the same ingredients. Oh, God, to this day, we don't have, they still keep the best stuff for the oh, Of course, they hide that stuff over there. I mean, you know, bologna, the bastard stepchild of mortadella, named after the town of Bologna, just not said properly in the States, right? Let's just, let's just be honest. There's so many I, little things. Why, like, even when you're in, like, Barcelona or you're in Italy and, like, you eat the prosciutto, you know, and you eat the mozzarella and, like, I can separate the beauty of where I am from how delicious something is. I'm not that, I can, I can separate the mesmerization of it. It's just everything they have that is better, bro. They just got well, better. It doesn't ingredients. sit on a boat to get here, right? It doesn't have to be shipped. It's the, I mean, for years, think about the fact that burrata when it was coming to the country, coming to the US, Brad was shit. bad. It was bad by the time it got here, but people Brad. still ate it. They just didn't realize it was, and then when you have the real thing, you're like, whoa your mind just blows as, as a young cook i thought burrata had to be tangy bro i thought like no no it's supposed to be tangy it's, it's the way it is you know no it's not <laughs> <laughs> the, it's but isn't terrible. that funny that that's what you were being taught as a young cook but it's just it was ignorance because the product was coming over and it was already bad just remember that man it's funny right like, we, we don't think yeah. about this on a regular basis. We paid money for that stuff. Big money for that stuff, dude. Oh, and we charged. And it came in the styrofoam. Tape oh, yeah. With the, with tape, the tape. Green tape. It's a D-O-C-G on it. Remember? It had all the, like, little labels on it. They're like, here, <laughs> you yeah. get the second rate. Vafan Kulo, right? Oh, the ABCD Van Fukulo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so that's always been the way it's been. And it's just... You know, we start to think about all those things like, and you, you've you been, you know, you're based in, in back East, which is a huge, I mean, I grew up in Rhode Island, which has a huge hub, right, of the Italian American community growing up between Providence and, and Aquidneck Island. And then, then there's New York and New Jersey has another huge, it was literally like they just plunked everybody boop, in two areas and then in Montreal. Right, that's the other big East Coast heavy. I miss it so bad, bro. I need it so bad. I gotta get back. I, when can we go back, bro? They just opened today, by the way. But the lines to get across the border were nine hours from the U.S. in. Um, crazy, right? I'll I'll, I'll wait. I will <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I'll wait too. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, you started. Did you know you wanted to cook when you were younger or is it something that just kind of came on as you were hanging out in the kitchen or as you know, you're in school? No, it's a funny, it's a funny thing, bro. Right. Because um, where, where we lived, you know, back in the day, you know, when I was a kid, you were, you, you were still able to score an illegal cable box. Right. So we had an illegal cable box. Okay. Yep. This is how the story begins. And with an illegal cable box. Cox cable by any chance? <laughs> oh, dude, dude, dude. We, oh man. Wow. I can't believe I'm talking about this on camera because we were so scared of the cable company until about two weeks ago. But so I'm a kid, right? And channel 19 was Nickelodeon. Channel 20, uh, 20 was Discovery Channel, right? And uh, we don't talk about Channel 88. You're not allowed to go to Channel 88. Don't go to Channel 88, whatever you do, okay? 
I'm, lo- I'm watching you. I know you. You, you love Channel 88. <laughs> exactly. That's why you I, love Spicer. Everybody had that channel where they grew up too. Like, right? It's yeah, like, yeah. So, so I, I, I love Nickelodeon. It, it's like someone showed me a piece of the aggro crag from like, you know, one of the, the, from guts the other day. And like, I could have cried, you know, like Nickelodeon was such a big part of my life and I'd switch back and forth because I, I was all in on Nickelodeon, but I knew that if I went to channel 20, if there wasn't like a tiger eating something, right. Cause there's only one discovery channel back then. Right. Yeah. Um, if there wasn't that, if it wasn't nature stuff, there was a show called Great Chefs of the World, right? And it took place in like, you know, Rich Carlton and like Grand Cayman and like, and in France and like different hotel kitchens, French chefs, very regimented in a enclosed little kitchen. And they would show how to, this is how you make a uh, 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 sauce, gr- I gr- you know, day. right? So, 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 and then like, then they, then they spun off great chefs, Hawaiian style, right? Then they went to Hawaii with great chefs. And we saw that cat, the big, beautiful chef. I forget, can't think of his name, the famous Hawaiian chef. And I saw them burying, Enjoy. dude, it, it, I saw like doing all this crazy stuff. And like, so I was always commercial breaks, clicking over to discovery to see if this show was on, you know, and And, um, and that is what made me interested in cooking. I wasn't the kid that was like at my mother's apron strings, like, no, man, I was waiting to eat. I was hanging out, playing games or, you know, whatever. When we ate, we ate. I enjoyed that ceremony, but I wasn't in the kitchen. I enjoyed watching it on TV, but that never in a, in a, in a trillion years was that the angle it just led me into the restaurant business, you know, illegal cable. Illegal cable. So that's not, I mean, this is a new one for me. I've heard a lot. I've heard grandmas, I've heard, but illegal cable is definitely yeah. not, you know, not the first, not grade, what I first grade, Miss Dundon, first grade. We were her first, first grade class. And I had told her, you know, first grade and go around, you know, what do you want to be when you grow up? Bah, 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 bah. I said chef, right? Because I already that's was I was seeing it, right? I was into it. I said chef. When I won chopped, um, when I won chopped, the f- um, it's the first time I ever did television. It was when I did chopped, right? And you know, in the on two forty first St. Anthony School and stuff, you become immediate uh, local legend. Boom! Within those four blocks, um, <laughs> the guy. And I ran into Ms. Dundon and um, um, I ran into Ms. Dundon and she was like, dude, you told me in the first, you know, she, she remembered us because we were her first class. She was a new teacher. She goes, you told me you wanted to be a chef in the first grade. And I was like, yeah, isn't that crazy? Like, and it was always like, it was, it was never a question. Like I knew I was going to finish high school and, and just like, just go and figure out how to, you know, to cook and learn how to cook. Like, I remember my friends being confused or scared, uh, not knowing what they wanted to do. And it was, and, and I really felt for them because I was just like, man, I, I, I don't, I do not, I do not relate to that feeling whatsoever because it's just always been like, boom, I want to cook. So what was your, you know, you graduate from high school, you've had, you've been watching these shows, you know, there's like, Great chefs of Europe, great chefs of Hawaii, great chefs, great cities, remember? And it just kept evolving because yeah. I was watching them the other, you know, I actually have the cookbook in here somewhere. Oh uh, man, that's incredible. Yeah. So it's your first job. Were you still in high school when you started working in the kitchen? Like my first yeah. job was at IHOP, right? I was a dishwasher at International House Pancakes. And I was still, I was a, a, a freshman in high school. Uh, I lied to get the job about my age. So that was like first gig, you know? How old are you? 49. No, how old are you when you... Um... Oh, I was 14. You had to be 15 to get a part-time job. I lied. Funny you say that. <laughs> I was 12 and lied and said I was 13 or 14. I was 12, bro. <laughs> and, and I had people that I really cared about at the time that um, were 
working at this catering hall in the Bronx called Alex and Henry's Legendary Catering Hall. Um, very Italian, very like if you know Russo's on the Bay in Howard Beach, very much like that, right? Um, but in Westchester County in Scarsdale. Let, and, like, um, and, and let 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 everybody kind of understand because I'm big picture. Like I grew up with these as well. Where I grew up, it was Mike's Kitchen, and it was a VFW hall, and it they did big events. But then when they weren't doing big events, it was a restaurant inside like a VFW hall. Right. Yeah. So this was that at about 600,000 square feet. Oh, that's huge. At that's a little bit bigger than what I would go to. Wedding factory. Like two football field size kitchens up and down. They had a dining room, a, 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 a la carte dining room tucked away with its own kitchen. And dude, I'm talking like imagine the, the, um, the stage for a lounge singer in the middle, the brass rail the the red like the whole picture it all that was i was 12. you're expecting dino to come walking in and and and, Dude, and do a set the at middle. the time what's crazy is that at the time i didn't know what i was looking at man and then i have thank god i have such vivid memories of it that yes now i can picture the like because he was there i you know like all these guys went to that place i remember doing a wedding and de niro was there not that i really care less but like you know like you know it was that kind of thing right and um imagine imagine go find your nearest 12 year old okay and throw them in an environment that was like 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 pirates. The cooks were pirates, mostly Italian and Portuguese and Haitian, right? And I was a bar back dude. I'll find the picture. I'll find the picture for you. I have it somewhere. I was a bar back. I had a cummerbund like this, bro. I was like, like it was, uh, it was like I loved working at this catering hall. I loved the action. I'd go home the first few weekends, and all I can hear was the bus bin full of silverware going like this, cha-cha-cha-cha in my brain. Cause I was in that dish pit with all my Haitian friends that were just like, like cranking thousands of glasses through this thing. And I was 12 years old. I lied, I think it was 14 in our neighborhood or something. And I loved it. Love how, did, how did that transition from front of the house to back house? Did you start working in the kitchen there or was it a little bit the, later what, on? What gave me a little more of a taste for the back of house was when I got when I got promoted from bar back to the Viennese crew, right? And what the Viennese crew is, is at these places, they would do these things at the end of the weddings called the v Venetian hour or the Viennese hour. And I would really, Zach, look up the history um, Venetian tables, Venetian hour, like what, where does this come from? How did the catering halls take it? Right. Cause they would, we would make these tables that were just cornucopious amounts of fruits and cakes and cookies and flaming Jubilee of love and nuts. Water. always nuts. Oh, not a nut station, an yeah. ice cream station, an Irish coffee station. The lights would connect pyrotechnics dun, 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 dun. like it was a big deal for your and you paid you were getting a wedding you, you have you paid a, wedding. a pretty penny for those things but you, there was always like the perfect orange right there was a bunch of perfect oranges bunch of perfect fruit there was always walnuts with the crackers they were never pre-cracked because they would tell you right. pre-cracked walnuts were not fresh there was all of that even even almonds came right you were getting almonds you were getting all that I remember that in a much smaller way. Um, let me know if you're coming home for dinner. Um, 16 years old, he's heading out. I got a four-year-old, bro. 16. Is he up there? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, uh, yeah. He start, my son started in the past two weeks. He's four years old. He started camp. He got a hit. I got, we got him like a big boy haircut and he started camp in the same week and i'm i am i'm melting every minute he is just growing because he, he's he's not you know my son dude he, he was because of of covid he wasn't exposed to 
kids the way he would have been. He missed his first year of preschool. So this was his first interaction. And for him to come home and already just have so much more knowledge <laughs> and be, his vocabulary grow. It's just, oh, it makes, I, I, I love it. Then I got my little girl, Briar Rose, who's going to be two years old, who's just like, hey, that that. Hey, that, that. she just loves her daddy. And it's That's about, a good time, thing. about time somebody likes me around here and treats me <laughs> about time. <laughs> so when you think about all those, like those growing up moments, I mean, I think one of the things about Italian, I would say growing up in Italian is, is food is very convivial. It's a very, it's a very poignant moment in the house, right? It, it transcends all boundaries. It doesn't matter what's going on. It's, I, like, I, I like to compare it to, for a lot of folks that don't understand what it's like growing up an Italian-American, it's like Thanksgiving. When the food hits the table, everything changes, right? Family feuds put aside, conversations about politics, religion, all that crap stops. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, okay, everybody, let's be thankful for what we have and let's, let's really be kind. And you know, not every family has that luxury in life, right? But that's what it was always like for an, what I grew up with, with an Italian family. And my mom's family's English. So it was basically a combination of the two. They're very similar in that life, that way of like sharing that meal. And I think that's what's become so interesting, trying to transfer that energy and that style of food into a restaurant, right? Into that moment where people come in and they feel comfortable. It's like breaking down those barriers when they walk in the door to feel welcome, to feel like they're in, getting that big grandma hug, right, of that traditional meal. And it's a hard thing to do. Oh, God. I mean, the, the hardest, right, as a chef. For, I mean, especially when you're in a position that you're in or one that I used to be in where someone's having a meal in your place someone's walking up to your host at your place and it starts right there are you are you welcome are you welcoming them in with open arms are you making them feel like holy shit like wait hold on a second there's four of you you came here you could have went anywhere you came here like oh oh welcome welcome home you're back thank god like you never left or it's like you walk up and, and by the way, this is on a, on a Thursday or a Friday, whether there's an hour long wait, we never, ever, ever, me and my former partner, John Nealon, right? My operating partner, we never turned people away, dude. There's nothing that a cocktail and some garlic knots or a margarita pizza or some shishito peppers or some, some chunks of provolone can't hold somebody over with that and a little bit of kindness, right? But now you walk into that same restaurant on a Thursday or a Friday that's pretty busy and you're like, hey, you know, it was me and my wife, you're excited. You know, it's so me, me, two couples, there's four of us, you know, kind of last minute, you know, hey, you got anything? And, and, and the person at the host is. Uh, mm, 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 mm. Uh, mm. Fuck out of here. Get that person out of my life, out of my restaurant, right? There's 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 the, the different mentality when you have that moment, right? Like the customers coming to you, they're our guest. It's like being a guest in someone's home. They want to be your guest. They've sought you out because they want that moment. And it I've always said that when your toe touches the curb to when your heel leaves that curb is when it starts. So if the sidewalk's dirty, if the, if you know, yeah. it, it's just, it's everything. Right. And I think, you know, you've, you've transitioned, right. We've all transitioned during the pandemic, but prior to that, you started, you know, you did chopped and you won. Right. And then it kind of rolled, like you had a roll going. Dude. It was crazy. I did Andy, my 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 restaurant mentor, Andy Forzheimer. Um, he, we we were working at a place. He made me a chef partner at a place called Barcelona in Greenwich, Connecticut. He ended up opening all over the country, Barcelona and Bar Taco. They made a huge move with like to Del Frisco's a couple of years ago. Like, oh my God, Google it. But like um I was working 
I was working for, oh my God, I just went off the, I just went off a cliff. Well, wait, wait, bring me back, bring me back. <laughs> See, you were working. I blame the restaurant Andy, business with Andy. You were a partner. Chop, 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 chop. Ah, so you went from chopped. How did it? How did it spiral from there? Like, was it you won chopped, and then the the floodgates opened, or did it just one? I won. I won chopped, right? And then probably a few months pass. It could be three. It could be six. It could be a year. I I, I don't have the time. I'm I'm. I'm going to one day, if I ever have some time, I really want to try to figure out the proper timeline. And I have people to help me do that, that are still in my life from that timeline. Right. Like I just finished filming, a sh- wrapping a show with Guy and the, 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 the head producer was somebody that was there in my life from when I was on chop the first time. So it's just like, ah, oh, full circle love. You know what I mean? But it, it really makes no sense to me, bro. I won, I won Chopped. I went back to Chopped Champions, totally. Mark Murphy wouldn't eat my food. I never liked Mark Murphy until I worked with him the first time. He took me to lunch, and, and now I can just – I want to kiss him when I think of him. I see him. You wouldn't eat him. your food? So wait, 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 wait. What happened? Why wouldn't he eat your food? It was like – it was like – it was smoked tippers was one of the items, right? And I was doing some sort of tartare. Smoked kipper, Mediterranean tartare with capers or something. I figure, hey, kippers are salty. Let's throw capers in there. It wasn't even part of the basket. Great cook. And, you know, lest anyone think that, like, you know, uh, I think I'm a maven with these competitions. I'm not, right? But so either way, um, halfway through the battle, sweet, sweet, sweet Ted Allen is like, contestants you know the kippers have been cold smoked therefore they must be cooked and i was already knee deep into a tartare so you know you know get out of here so i kept going with the tartare and um uh the other two judges who i don't even remember who they were i think alex alex was always good to me so i believe alex was one of them they both ate it and were kind and mark murphy mark murphy right in front of them Not eating it. <laughs> Supposed to be cooked. And I got eliminated. Boom. First round gone. <laughs> so that was my first time. And now, oh, bro. Woo. I hated Mark Murphy. I could have, oh, my least favorite chef on the Food Network for a few years, man. Yeah. Yeah. It had to be a few years until I got the call again. From because and I and I credit a couple of people that I'm happy to name Beth Schiff. A lot of people know Beth. She put thousands of young cooks on chop, dude. She is she is a man. Beth does not get enough credit for what she's done for our uh, young youth in this industry and the platform she's done and she's created. She's the best, right? And and Vivian Sorensen and somehow I get a call to, I think I did New York city wine and food. We were, we were cooking pizza. I had a restaurant and they, 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 they freaking called me that week and were like, Hey, why don't you come in and judge an episode of chopped uh, guest judge? This is early chop bro. Season four. It's like season 4,000 right now. Right. <laughs> in a good way. So like early chopped, right. right? Scott was still buttoned up to here back then. It was before Scotty Scotty Bones, Scotty Conan started buttoning down. You the know, belly button. Button. Now he's the belly yeah. button. Yeah, belly back button. then he was buttoned all the way up to here, bro. You should have seen him. And he was bald. No, I'm kidding. He was never bald. <laughs> <laughs> bald. You ever see that guy's head of hair? He's so beautiful. <laughs> he's stunning. Don't even get me started on Scotty Conan. But this was early, early, early chopped, right? And... One episode, come in, guest judge. I sat on the ed next to sweet baby Ted. And like that day, they asked me to do like three or four more. And and then I went on this run. I got really got to, we got to get these numbers. Like I did quite a bit of chopped for a while. 
here and there, little poop, 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 poops here and there. At that point, you know, local guy, that was pretty big deal. It's a big deal just to compete on chops, you know? I mean, it, you know, it, it really, it, especially when you're articulate about food and you can explain the reasons, people get excited. They want to understand why didn't it taste good? And if you can articulate that, you- It's hard. It's a gift. And I'm not saying I have that. I'm just like, you know, like, do that what guy. Sorry. Sorry. Nobody better in the world. Um, my guy can literally, with his words, ha my mouth starts moving and these glands start to swell and salivate. He knows how to do that. He's and, and like, so I always try to take my cues from, from Uncle Guy, you know? Um, I'd be silly not to, but yeah, dude. I mean, I, you're right. That, 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 that was, even when I did Food Network Star, which ended up coming years later, um, that was... That was all Bobby and Jada would just ham. Oh my God, it's so rude of me. I am so sorry. <laughs> Look, my sticker matches my hands. I see that. Mm, Look cool. at you. I got to send you all so, so, stuff. Let, let's talk about the, the next Food Network star. How did you want to do that? Or was it something they asked and you had to like, and you questioned it? I don't want to do it. Um, it's like my my son Bo was six months old, and it required me going to California for a month and a half, you know, sequestered, no phones, no phones, no phones no right? Television, no TV. Did you were you allowed to have music or anything else, or was it just? I believe music was okay. No audio books. No, I always confuse fiction and nonfiction, but no books based on current events or real life. Yeah, uh, it had to keep you basically in the zone, right? I don't think people realize that that actually happens too. Yeah. I think that there's a whole component of like you know, Next Food Network star and Top Chef, you know, that you're sequestered. You have no access to the outside world until they give it to you and they video it, <laughs> right? Crazy, crazy. Like, you want right? to talk to your kid? Hang on. Give me a second. <laughs> I got yeah. you. Now you can call your kid because I know you're go. die because you feel like crap because you're not home. It's, oh, yeah, bro. I think it's interesting. And, and, but I don't think the public realizes the duress you're put under when you're in that environment. And it's, it, it's a lot, you know, it's a lot on you. It burdens you because you feel like you're letting down your family, but you know, you're trying to do it to help and support your family and move exactly. things forward. So like, you know, in my case, I was looking for an excuse not to do it. So I go to my wife, Sherry, who's my, my, my everything, right? She's my rock star. And, um, and I'm like, <laughs> you know, he may actually want me to go to California. Get, get, listen to this. A month and a half. You believe that? Both are six months old. We would never do crazy, right? These people are nuts. What's, what, we, what should we get for dinner? And she's like, well, you got to do that. And I was like, no. And she's like, no, I think you should do it. And it was what not that she's not supportive. My wife is like, dude, my wife doesn't have my back. She's in front of me kicking in doors and teeth, like whatever she's got to do, bro. Right. So she's got she believes in me. But even her, she was just kind of like, you know, um, oh, my God. See, see what happens when like towards the end of the day for me. My, you, get, my, you know, there's too much stuff going on. Well, you mean, it's great to have a partner that wants to see the success, your success, but also pushes you to go outside of your, of your comfort zone. Yes. Yes. So the show, exactly. So, so, um, while I was kind of letting, I was kind of like letting it fester at this point and I, and you know, my, my people, you know, people, whatever, my, my, my manager is trying to people well, this idiot is my people. Stupid, uh -huh. <laughs> but like people really, they need to know what the hell's going on. Am I gonna be? Am I doing the show? Am I not doing the show? And I had an assistant at the time that had um um put a stack of papers in front of me that had um a bunch of just like you know uh party rental sheets and you know um um uh, reimbursements for you know Fine forms. And, and I signed the last page of a, uh, with like a 44 page Food Network star slash Food Network contract. And 
I get a call from, from Kenny like a week later and he's like, what the fuck did you do? I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, you signed the contract with Hathor. And I was just like, what do you like? And now I'm streaming. I hear him. I'm like, no, F you. I didn't sign nothing. Blah, blah, blah. Meanwhile, it took a day to figure it out. I signed it. And I was like, I was like, all right, let's go. It's not like you signed it. There's no renegotiating that once it's done. Nope. And it was the best. It was such, it was a, the biggest blessing um, of my life. And, um, you know, Bo is just, you know, those that month and a half being gone, like it wasn't so like about a week and a half ago, he learned my name. So that was nice. <laughs> so it went from uh, <laughs> it didn't affect him at all. No, I'm kidding. It was it was great, dude. It was. And like even like the gang that I was, you know, all, all my my friends that I was on Food Network Star with, like, I mean, like, oh. Like you, you go through that. You can relate when you go through that sort of experience. There's a bond that that we all have that is pretty special, and I and I, and I love them so much. So, so let's, let's kind of like shift a little bit. So, how did you start Gabagool, and and what 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 are you up to? I've seen I've seen videos of you at Parma Palooza. You're like you know doing so many fun things. But how did Gabagool start and, and what's your goal with that moving forward? Survival. Gabagool started because I was in California working and, you know, I, I, um, I, I had, I, I stepped away from the five restaurants that I, I helped build with my operating partner, John, we both stepped away and um, it was, it, it got, it got, um, it got pretty hairy, you know? financially um and you know at this there's some uh pinch points that you come to in situations like that where you, it's like fight or flight and you need to like i think there was like you know the car payment coming up and like phones or something you know and then i was in cali and i was like oh okay i, I it was like like that's how bad it got it wasn't adding up you know and I had purchased this design that someone had drawn of um, a spoof of the Google logo. I'm still waiting for my cease and desist. I only did it to get a cease and desist. Um, <laughs> let's go so I can stop. No. And like, so, so I bought it and I, um, I called someone and I had, I said, let's get a premium hoodie. Let's get a premium hoodie. I go, um, order them. Thank God that person had credit. I go get a few hundred of them. I go, let's get this embroidered on there. And let's, let's sell Gabagool, Gabagool hoodies, you know? And, um, and, and it, and it, well, it, it went, you know, it went and, and like, it saved my took us at that point, bro, big time. And, it's funny because then, you know, I really got into it because it was, it then became this new, um, I'm right near Westchester airport. If you ever need to fly in, you fly right into Westchester, bro. I'll come pick you up. <laughs> I got an electric bike. I'll come get you. <laughs> Perfect. Me and you like dumb and dumber on that thing. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> I like that idea. Well, okay. So let's talk about Gabagool, that term. Now the debate. Gabagool. Okay. Capicola, same thing. Oh, look at the look on your face. Yeah. Same thing, different region of the country. Yeah, listen, I don't think we can. I thought the hot topic for you was going to be sauce gravy. No, I mean, look, sauce and gravy depends on where your family came from in Italy. How you grew up? How do you tell somebody the way they've known the if their grandma called it gravy or the grandma called it sauce? Who am I to tell you? That well, and wrong? there's also Sunday gravy. Was it just tomato or did it have a trotter in it? A bunch of brajol uh, sausage. What? Gravy's ragu and gravy is red sauce, I think. Yeah, it's both. But like, did you do the Sunday gravy at your house where they have the sausages, the meatballs, 
the brajol and the trotter in it. And then, they, and then they separate the meat out. They put it on a separate plate. And then the sauce, they mix with the pasta. And then somebody goes, oh, I don't eat meat. And they're like, oh, you can have the sauce with the pasta, right? Remember that? It's yeah, like, have that. Don't worry have about that. it. Have that. You'll be fine. <laughs> Dude, no. <laughs> and then and, you know what people don't realize that's primi secondi, right? Yeah, the the primi becomes your pasta that's made with the sauce and the you know the beautiful you know meat and everything, right? The rag the ragu, um, or the gravy, whatever, or depending on yeah. how you grew up, um, and then so that's the the primi is the pasta, and then secondi is, and then you know you get that big caudar or that big platter of braised meat and then that's when the broccoli rob comes out that's when the artichoke did you guys, have, did you guys have the broccoli rob hot or did you have it cold marinated with garlic and lemon cold it sat my mom made it and it sat on the counter my mm -hmm. mom made she braised it in garlic and and lemon and 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 all that stuff when i say braised it you know um the, like the gi joe braised. was wearing it right like it was like, 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 green. <laughs> like oh, well, I think of the picture of a hammer comes to mind. Like she hammers the broccoli rob, right? And it's something special happens to it somehow still. Um, and um, yeah, then, then you'd have the segonda, you'd have the meat that you simmered in the sauce. And that meal probably started with some homemade olives that my dad makes and some marinated eggplant that my dad makes, maybe some marinated pickled mushrooms that are wild forage in Yonkers, New York by my godfather, Mimo, a little bit of bread from a and Bakery and some provolone, right? And then the salad happened after yep. Segondi. We'd have our salad at the end of the meal. Then that would essentially, this is Sunday, by the way. We don't eat like this every day. Then, then, then that is essentially followed by your mixture of nuts in the shell with the crackers, um, some sliced fennel and some mandarins or some oranges or some pears or something along those lines. And, and it may, then the chestnuts, that's when they come out. If you're doing chestnuts, if that's the season. And then, and then you've made it, right? You get final boss. You made it to the end of Super Mario. You get, you made it to dessert. You somehow like, you know, as a kid, you, you, you would, you would barely make it to, Segondi, you'd go play and show up at dessert again, and you you lost that whole part. Sometimes you lose the middle, and the goal is is like, okay, how deep is the cookie plate today? Like, how deep did they go on the cookies? Is there pizzelle? Is there the three colors? Is there the thumbprints? Right? Like, I got a, I got a question for you. Is and this is a debate with my mom. Um, when you like uh, a big meal, Thanksgiving big family Sunday meal, multi-course family meal, right? My mother was always of this mindset. We, mom, and I am allowed to do this, okay? I'm starting to get really offended with a lot of the Italian, like, jokes. Like, I'm all in on Gabagool and Soprano stuff and stuff like that. But now there's a lot of, like, like of the meatball stuff. And it's starting to, it's start, I'm, I might have to use my platform. Hey, come <laughs> on out. Who's that, Grammy? <gasps> Hey, babe, come here. Come say hi. She won't come up. Come here, baby. He's a very famous chef. He's a very big deal. Not really. Look at this guy. Grammy, what'd you make? Whoa. Dude. Grammy, you, want to, you don't have to, but if you'd like to say hi, I'm sure that they'd love to say hello to you. Baby, come here. Come say hi to Chris Constantino. You're so, because you're so beautiful. Look at you. Look how out of my league my wife is. And, and this doesn't normally happen, guys, okay? <laughs> Hi. Hi, how are you? And how are you? You in the beach. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Look at you, he got dinner today. Lucky him. Wow, this is my, uh, Grammy made pizzelli with like a like a, a little little blush cream sauce, okay? Oh, yeah, dude, nice. you are loving it. Dude, this is, uh, well, that's the thing. So when, when we had to um, let go of the house, um, we had an apartment set up here because we lived here before we had the house and set up a little a little situation for us. And the one great thing about being back with Grammy, it, oh my, you smell the prosciutto coming off this thing. The one, the great thing, one of the great things about being back here is that we, it's like some square meals happening right now. <laughs> my wife did not cook this, okay, guys. That's so amazing. yeah, so, so yeah, it's cool. So what's what's this debate you were asking me about? 
the meal, the end of the meal, your mom was saying, she would say, mama, we're going to take our time tonight. Are we going to take our time? We're not going to rush. Are we going to take our, which means that there was going to be about 45 minutes, half hour between sometimes an hour between courses before the next course would happen. And it got to a point where it was making me crazy and I had to put my foot down. Okay. I said, guys, if I'm at a dinner, we're going course to course because not because I want to leave, not because I'm trying to get out of there, but when they space it out like that, who the hell, who can make it? Who can enjoy fall it? Asleep. I mean, you know, did you always, did you, how many uncles and, and, and family members did you have that did the britches unbutton the belt? Right. Every, what, how many? I mean, how many were at the table? Every one of them. <laughs> right? <laughs> like, it's like, who gets up and their drawers falls down? Then you know not they a, the most, right? Not a button not a button in the house that's do a, do a loop at that point of the night. Yeah, always. And everybody laughs and thinks that's a joke. But that was like the deal. It's like, oh, the belt. They undo the belt. And then you know it's really me. They undo the top button and you're just laughing. Can you imagine we didn't have Lululemon, you know what I mean, nowadays with the Elastico? Like, oh, I mean, my God. That would have been. <laughs> that's it. Those, 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 old, those old grease balls would have loved it. And I'm allowed to say that, too, okay? That would have been. I mean, I can just see it now because back then it was the hook pant, right, with the long front that had the little hook that came over. They would undo the – yeah, right? And <laughs> Depends how much you ate. There was a yeah, couple. You could undo the hooks and go backwards, right? But now, I mean, that that pant in a Lululemon top would be perfect. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Big elastic right, pant. Right, yeah. <laughs> Basically, chef wear. It would be the old fashioned chef wear pants. Dude, well, have you seen these guys in LA? They're in. They open the shop in Venice. I believe they're based out of there. Um, called Cookman, and they make dude. It's like they're like thirty dollars chef pants, right? And it's literally their chef pants, okay? The material, the elastic, the, the, the drawstring, they put, they, there's a nice little tag they put on it, a little, there's a little hook on it to put a key or something, but they're basic pants, um, cook pants, and they make like a thousand different um, patterns. And I own like 70 pairs and, you know, I just rip through them because like I, I beat up everything in my life um, when it comes to clothes, you know, and sneakers. And but it's they're the best, bro. Like you gotta say, like, like yeah. So like, there's you so know. many. It's just funny. I think about back in the day when I was a young cook. The the cool thing was to wear chef wear, and it was the chili pants, the black and white aqua restaurant fish pant, and then it just kept on rolling from there. Dude, I'll tell you something. I was wearing black and white checkered chef pants from Cookman Classics, rolled up a little bit. I had on these all white. Jordan one sales, right? So the whole thing is this all white sale color. I don't know. There's probably more we can ask Dom from Sue Surgeon about it. Like, I, like they're, they're really beautiful, cool sneakers, right? And it was like a PA on set or something, a young, hip, Gen Zer. I felt so proud. He's like, she's like, oh, and I had a white cook shirt on, bro. Button cook shirt, okay? Baggy chef pants, rolled up, Jay's white cook shirt. Cool kid, cool cat. Definitely in the cool cat club. Was like, yo, CP, listen to this. She go, good fit. And I go, good fit. I go, what, what do you, is that, I haven't been dieting. What are you talking <laughs> about? I want to at some point. And she's like, no, nah, man, you're, you're fit. You're, you the way your pants are sitting and with the sneakers and you got your snap top, your snap top to the top. She's like, damn, dope. And I was like, yeah, yeah. I do got a dope fit. Thank you. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> You're I'm like, like, wow. And I don't get more compliments from cooler, younger people than when I'm wearing these like cook, these like hilarious, like essentially chili pepper cook pants. Which is hysterical to think. Oh my I God. love it. I love it. I love the way fast everything is backwards, man. Let's go with it. <laughs> it's like, dude, whatever dude. works. <laughs> so, crazy. so, so now you've been. Let's just let's just kind of like you've done, chopped. Now you're judging grocery games. You're doing all star grocery games, right? You've competed on. You've done TOC, twice, TOC, a couple times. We've done 
um, beat Bobby Flay judging it. And then I, I was able to, you know, even host a couple of episodes, which was oh, like, nice. which was like so grateful um, for that. Um, I mean, Tyler's show, Knife Fight, um, Bertinelli's show, Alex's show. I mean, listen, I get around, bro. I'm a little bit of a Putanesca, you know? You know the story of the Putanesca sauce? And for those of the folks out there that don't know what Putanesca sauce, we'll call that whore sauce. Yes, whore yes. Sauce. Oh, it's like a little whore sauce uh, on, your, <laughs> on your chicken scarpiello. <laughs> Well, listen, you are a busy man. You've got some food in front of you. I'm going to do this. I don't care. I'm quick, loving this. This this really quick. I do this. It's like a rapid fire and it's straight up. So Before ready? Before do that, okay. I just need, um, I think I tell you this every time we speak, you're probably getting sick of it, but you are such a, you are a pioneer you are a beacon for so many young cooks. I mean, I remember you running around with a roan in the early days. And I remember you um, doing your sausage, you know, curing stuff. And I remember you doing your first restaurant and then not doing that one and then moving to the other thing. And then all the cool things you've done in between and all the things that you've done to open up your, your heart and your mind and your personal life to the rest of us, we're all very, very grateful for you. And, and like I say to a lot of my new friends, um, I'm very grateful for is that I was a fan before we were friends. So uh, thank you. And like doing this is like, wow, like it's very, very, very serious stuff for me. So rapid fire. <laughs> It's fun to see people succeed on their terms and you're doing what you want and it's making you happy and you have a great family. And you know, the Italian American community that I grew up in is very, is very, it's almost the same, right? We're just in two different parts of the Northeast and it's really oh, yeah. exciting oh, yeah. to see like, look, I grew up with tomato pie. Tomato pie is very Rhode Island and very Utica, right? So it's really interesting to see like how people have, and it's evolved and changed. And I'm just, I'm just really excited that we get to meet and hang out and there's going to be a lot more of that. I'm sure down the road as we get, oh, yeah. get to play and let's yeah, have some it's fun. funny. You, you finally got to see that DM I sent about 11 years ago. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> I felt like <laughs> such a knob. You were like, I, I sent you a like, DM. I was like, dude, like a, oh. is that, at the end, I'm like a, decade ago just like pouring my heart and then out. i sent you a message i was like dude I just and he sent me a message recently to like catch up or something and he was like oh my god bro i'm sorry i missed this i'm like yeah 11 years later bro <laughs> are you dude i i didn't even to be honest it's so funny like when i first got on dude, all those dude. social media platforms i didn't know how to navigate half that crap i'm still learning bro please the stuff oh my I, god. I, how are you supposed to see it how and even now right nowadays like you know, it's tough, man. How are you supposed to like you, guys like us? We're hospitality dudes. We're hospitality people. We like making people feel good. Right. So one way is to connect with people. It's how me and you do our best work. Guys like me and you, when we connect with people, whether real life or Instagram or something like that. And like, I, I know me, I, I try my damnedest to just like be interactive and it's it. And you, you quickly learn, at least I'm learning like, yeah, dude, that is, it's hard. It is hard. It's not realistic. You miss so much and you feel bad. Yes. There can be yeah. a lot of intake and a lot of trying to process and a lot of trying to get back to people in a really timely way is not always the easiest thing in the world at all. So hard, dude. So hard. But you ready yeah. for rapid fire? I love rapid fire. All right. Hot dog, hamburger. Hamburger. Chocolate, fruit. Chocolate. Milk or dark? Chocolate. Milk. Really? Coffee. Wait, can't live without? No, I'm just saying. It's favorite. Oh, favorite. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Milk. Coffee or tea? Give me a fucking dark chocolate, bro. Sorry. <laughs> um, hardcore coffee, Marzocco Linea, but now into tea. I don't know. Sorry. Rapid fire. My bad. All right. Pork or beef? Uh, beef. Hmm. Yeah. Braised or grilled? Grilled. Nigiri, sashimi. 
Nigeria. Sea urchin, caviar. Caviar. Hey, real quick, pause. I'm comfortable saying this now. And um, and I'm only comfortable with it because Antonio Lafaso this week in Nashville made me comfortable with it. I hate uni. Keep it away from me. I don't want it. I don't want to know nothing about it. I stepped on a sea urchin one. I already hated it before I tasted them. So, like, all right, sorry, boom. But caviar, bro? Oh, I love, my I'm a God. Okay. Oh, sorry. Ketchup or mustard? Ketchup. Sorry, it's over. <laughs> Just because it's red and looks like marinara doesn't mean it's good. <laughs> Dude, ketchup on a, can you, so what do you put on your bacon, egg, and cheese from a bodega? No, no, mustard no i don't i even eat it as it is nah see i think it's a, i think it's like so that's the thing right it's like Ooh, it's gnarly. Okay. i don't do ketchup at all it's gotta be i mean it's the worst thing in the world for you right obviously but like um um 241st and white plains road uh max's bodega my boy max um um you would you'd go in there and you, you know bacon egg and cheese salt pepper hot ketchup sauce. like Hot sauce. Like, Bacon and cheese with hot hey. sauce. Wait, wait, hot sauce <laughs> you said or not said? Whatever. Next. Next. Pasta or noodles? Pasta. Dumpling ravioli? Dumplings. Red or white wine? Uh, white. Okay. Bourbon? Tequila? Mm -hmm. I'm bad at both of them. See, there's no wrong answer. It's just personal opinion because everybody yeah, wants to. I want to like, like when when like cool cats are like, bro, this thing is seven hundred and fifty dollars a glass, and it was aged in you know you know monkey brains, whatever, and like it's it's you know like someone gave me uh, this this real Gavone used to fucking give me Louis the Thirteenth thinking it was like this thing right a big big deal like a big bacala right and I'd want to enjoy it I'd want to and you'd sip it and I'd, I'd want to throw it against the fucking wall and like even as I got older I'm like no 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 I'm gonna figure this out I'm gonna figure this out I hate it all Grappa I learned the trick from a great man that your your third sip if you can get to that third sip grappa changes and it's a real thing that is true. Third I, sip I, can, you, I can attest to that i'll yeah. tell you my first experience with grappa was awful i was birthright oh it was awful <laughs> i was at um i was with mark miller and stephen piles miss edna lewis i was in atlanta and we went to Miss Miss Lewis's restaurant, and she had her restaurant with Scott Peacock, and everybody was there. I mean, this was like I was super greenhorn cook. We went to Atlanta to cook an event uh, for Jimmy Carter uh, for his organization to build homes. Of course, everybody is very familiar with it, and um, we went there as the after party, and she gave me grappa, Miss Lewis. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know I was supposed to sip it. So I down the hatch. Whoo! Man, I thought that stuff was gonna take the enamel off my teeth. It was so strong. Oh, so strong. I couldn't, I was I was that took me down hard. I just didn't. And she laughed and she Not laughed. And she's like, honey, that was supposed to be for sipping with your dessert. And so I had no idea. I was so dumb. I, I I learned my lesson, and from that point on, I definitely. As time got on, I got better with it, but. Lemoncello? I do love it. Um, I'm an, I'm more, I used, you know, I haven't had a drink for three years. So um, I'm more, I used to like Nocino more. See, my uncle, uh, uh, cousin Frank, cousin Frank would make Lemoncello with this milk that I grew up with in Ponza. That was the Parmela boxed milk, right? Oh wow! Like malty and like I, I don't know something about it. I hit I, I could, that's what they had on the island. They weren't ca really cows, you know. It wasn't a cow situation. But what Uncle Frank would do is he had um, a recipe that's so good, and my uncle Louis would actually do it too. That's milk, uh, lemoncello that's made with that milk and you know the grain alcohol and the lemons, 
and it and you keep it in the freezer in a glass bottle and it pours out like 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 molasses is just kind of rolling over your lips oh, you wow. know what i mean just like the tech and it's frozen but it doesn't freeze totally and it's creamy limoncello and i've made it with just as a dessert as essentially a straight up i get fresh farm cream lemons and then I sweeten it with like, if I get this nice local maple and stuff like that, and I'll steep that and I'll just put that on a plate with some fresh fruit. And like that comes from Uncle Louis Limoncello. That sounds I'm, great. It's like a creamsicle kind of vibe. You know what I mean? Amazing. It's such a simple thing that we think of like a cream, you mentioned creamsicle and people are like, oh, but it has so many. They're all. Yeah. Old school. I mean, you grew up with Italian ice, the little green cup and the wooden spoon. Dude. All I ever wanted to do was remake those cups and serve ice cream in them at the restaurant. But I was afraid, you know, I was afraid to get sued. But then make the make the spoon out of a cookie. So when they would try to use it, it would break. And it, you know, like just like oh. your kids, because you're always at the beach. The guy came up, the little bell would ring. You'd chase down the car. You'd get the Italian ice. And it'd be so hard, you could throw it through a car windshield. And you'd try to get, yeah, you'd be scraping it with that wooden shit spoon. And then it would break. And then you're fucked at the beach as a little kid and your hands are covered with sand and you're sticky. And then you're pushing it out and chewing it. Anxiety. Remember Anxiety. that? That's you like lose your spoon, dude. You're on your own, too. Yeah. It's like Survivor out on that beach when you're a kid, dude. You're on oh, your own. The guy's already gone. He's like, I'm going to the next beach. Piss off, kids. I'm out of here. Dude. Oh, God. And like, you know, where we were, it was either you had Mr. Softy or you let Mr. Softy go. You let him pass because the next guy was good humor. And what was your go-to from that sort of vehicle growing up? That oh, sort of good vehicle. humor one? Package. Was if it wasn't Italian ice, what would you go? If it wasn't Italian ice, it was the ice cream cone, the nutty buddy, right? And you would go down, it was the cone, the nuts and the coated chocolate. And it's like- Talk on the bottom. And then the, the bottom of the cone has the chocolate in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the top was coated with chocolate with all the nuts on it. And it was like vanilla ice cream. But inevitably, if you didn't eat it right, the whole top would fall off and you'd be screwed. It'd come right off. Come right off. And you'd be like, oh! For me, it was, um, it was that- banana fudge chocolate fudge ice pop i don't know if you remember it it was it was uh chocolate fudge ice banana ice chocolate fudge yep. ice. do you remember the, the, rocket. the rocket remember the rocket it was the red the white and the blue that was all ridged and then you had the mickey uh, staple, bro. Bubble nose the bubblegum nose <laughs> that every kid cracked you know a friend who cracked it too okay because this we could really go down the rabbit hole but i'll give you one more do you remember the WWF cookie sandwich with the stick on it? And it had like wrestlers on like, like, like lasered. On I think that was past my time. Oh. <laughs> All that stuff. Like I think about snack cakes as a kid. And I, and I, there's one that I think about that I talked about recently, which was like these hand pies, They're like hostess hand pies. Apple hand pies, cherry hand pies, right? Oh, and they had the little cowboy characters that used to be to represent them. Right? Yes. Yeah. Then when when Ninja Turtles came out, yep. right? Big deal. I remember that was a big deal when I was a kid, right? Um, they made those hand pies with essentially uh, a green pastry cream, uh, a green like and like cream on the inside. And like, and we never got that, you know, we didn't get that stuff in the house, you know, like, so like, all those things are very special to me. And I think I, I probably went a little too hard on it once I was able to. Uh, well, I think that was, that. An, that's an interesting time too. If you think about those old packaged foods and how powerful they are because they were denied. And when they were a denied item, you coveted them. So they're stuck in your brain as the no thing and you gravitate towards them. I right? think about those hand pies and I think about Mortal Kombat on arcade. Oh, and big machine. Yep, and going to the back of the bodegas because they'd have to hide them, you know, the Mortal Kombat. And, like, that's when you'd grab the hand pies or a Hostess cupcake or grape bubble, bubble gum, bubble yum, grape bubble yum, grape. Oh, and they haven't changed that recipe. It's beautiful Not still, fair. right? And you'd go and you'd either play Mortal Kombat all day with your friends or you'd play Fiardini, foosball, all day in the back of Cafe Dion's in the Bronx with our friends, sweating, you know? 
I have an incredible, and we, we'll save it for another day, but I have an incredible Guy Fieri foosball story. Ooh, I can't wait for that one. Oh, dude, it's very intense, very intense. Well, listen up, you need to eat. I can't say thank you enough for taking time out of your schedule and go spend some time with your family. But uh, thanks for joining me and uh, I look forward to seeing you in person soon. Jeff, I think I'm seeing you next week. Yes, you are. Secrets. Love you. Bye. Bye.